Pyphrius B. Metatron. I am Pyphrius B. Metatron on the sevens. I am your host. I'm the hostess with the mostest. I'm appreciative and grateful for everyone that is here today. And right now I want to open up the floor and if anyone wants to greet or give a progress report or just say hi. I'm, I'm opening up the floor. Give us a minute to get that done and then we're going to run on with today's topic. One thing I'm thankful and grateful for, uh, the humidity that has been plaguing Las Vegas. Uh, we have a reprieve of it today. Thus, I am not sweating like I've been uh, out in the field <laughs> doing a bunch of field work. I'm very, very, very grateful. It is a cool 102 with 58% humidity. And for for those of us that been in Vegas for the past three weeks, we'll take 102 with 58 humidity. So I'm thankful and I'm grateful. Anybody, anybody want to say hello? Anybody want to tap in? Anybody just want to say hey? Go ahead. Hey, this is David. Just want to say hello. Thankful for everyone as always. And uh, you know, I was just really moved to uh, say or remind everyone that a setback is a setup for a comeback. So. When you're down and out, just remember, you know, tomorrow you can, as, as uh, you said, uh, we can manifest whatever we want. So make it happen. Absolutely. 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 I like that. A setback is a setup for a comeback. I like that, man. I won't steal that one, David. I promise you I won't. But oh, I like no. It's, it's, I'm, sh I'm sharing. I'm sharing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's that that hit home. That hit home for for me and I'm sure it hit home for a few others and we're grateful for everybody that's here live uh, via the book, via Zoom, via my radio station and we're also grateful for anyone who watches this uh, in a replay. Uh, we're, we're grateful for you and David said it, a setback is a setup for a comeback. So yes, yes, yes. We want to run on, uh, uh, we had a quarter to the hour. We want to run on to the lesson today. We are still talking about the intellectual self. It is connected to that throat chakra. Uh, it is home to our learning capacity. It determines how and what we learn and communicate. And through our intellectual self is how we express our various truths. Today, I want to touch on truth, morality, and your belief systems. Uh, the key word for today, the key phrase for today uh, concerning truth, morality, and your belief systems is discern, 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 fact from fiction, truth, from lies and facts from propaganda. Um, we all are being subjected to a bombardment of information. Um, even if you do not partake in news or television or things of that nature, you can't get away from the vibration of the bombardment of the information that is being put out uh, by the various outlets at this time. Um, it is imperative for each one of us not to assign ourselves to any particular group or group think mentality and really lean on your own discernment in reference to fact from fiction, truth from lies, and facts versus propaganda. I want to first hit on uh, uh, a topic that I started writing this uh, blog post, oh my gosh, probably five or six months ago, and I, I, I couldn't finished the blog post and it was the reason why it was because it wasn't supposed to be done until I did this part of the class uh, today. Um, but I, I, I want to break down um, a truth or the truth versus our beliefs. 
simple, simple exercise, simple exercise. Uh, a truth, one plus one equals two. Everybody agree that that is a truth here in 3D that you have, you have one pin plus, where is it at? Here it is. You got one pin plus one pin equals what? Two pins. I got two pins. That is a truth. Why? Because it's it is involving the definition of the number two. These two are pins. So one plus one equals two. That is a truth. However, <laughs> there are many other mathematical functions and calculations that arrive at the number two. So one plus one equals two is not the truth. It is a truth, but it's just one side of the equation of how you come up with the number two. Somebody else can uh, come at you and say four minus two. They're not wrong, it's, it's, it's still two. It's different than yours. See what I mean? Uh, a truth or the truth. Let me let me go on to another one. Let me go on to another one. Regardless if you think it's flat, round, if it's a simulation or whatever, the earth, <laughs> the planet that we're on, orbits around the sun. That's the truth. That's That can be proven through mathematical calculations and observance with your own eyes if you have a telescope. Another truth, there are eight to nine, depending upon who you listen to, planets in our solar system. Can't get around that. You look up, track them, you can find them. Very easy to find. There's uh, uh, applications that you can download on your phone and let you know where they are at any given time. Eight to nine planets in our solar system. Another truth, we have 24 hours in one Earth day. That's the truth. You know why? Because Earth is ran on a 24-hour system. If they cut it down to 12 hours, that would be another truth. If they, if they expanded it to 48 hours, all they have to do is change the measure of time, how they measure time. But the measurement of time on Earth is a truth. The way we measure time, it takes us 24 hours to go from, one, from sun up, sun down, and back again. One more, just to let you know what I'm meaning. The boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And the melting point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Those can't be disputed. Those, you can go in the lab, you can get you a glass uh, beaker and fill it up with water and put it up under a flame and you put a thermometer in there and when it hits 212, the water will start to boil. You put water in anything that is below 32 degrees and it will freeze. And then once you raise the temperature up to 32, the water will begin to melt. Those are proven. We can't dispute. Those are a truth. Those are examples of a truth or the truth. We're not going to talk about any absolute truths today. Um, uh, I have my own theory on the absolute truth. That's for a whole nother show. Uh, but we're talking about a truth and the truth. One plus one equals two is the truth. Four minus two equals two is the truth as well. Anybody else got some examples of a truth or the truth along the lines that I have uh, uh, laid out right here? Anybody want to add anything? Want to comment on that? 
Anybody dispute one plus one equaling two? I know they got new math going on nowadays, so I don't know. When I was in school, one plus one equal two. If it can, oh, hi, oh, Jolene. Sh- yes, go ahead. You? I'm well, how are you? Uh, well, I'm driving in another rainstorm, so I'm trying to get home. I feel like I, st- I waited a little longer to leave work so I couldn't avoid the traffic at least, but then I ran into the storm. New Mexico is, is thunder, but the numbers um, are really, now that I have to check other people's um, payroll because I got this little you know, um, promotion, mm-hmm. I'm responsible for counting other people pay time and it's stressing me the hell out because all I want is, all I know is one plus one. You know, <laughs> so I have to use a calculator and I'm, I'm whole numbers. And these young people come in with half 25 point, 25 point, 75 point. I'm like, what the hell? Just do one. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, and, and Jolene, please do not uh, minimize your promotion. It wasn't a little promotion. Please don't do that. It was a oh, big yeah, one. I got a <laughs> it was a big yeah, one. Yeah, it's, it's a big one. Yes, yes, yes. And Thanks. yes, and, and yes, we we are all, like I said, we are all being being bombarded with with uh you know a lot of information and 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 some of the information that we're being bombarded with and being forced to to see and accept contradicts some of the truths that I know are evident. Um, uh, we're not getting into people's choices uh, or desires or things of that nature, but there are there are some truths that are being blurred right now. We all know what we we know what's what's happening. We know what's happening. There are there are uh, uh, people uh, born one way. You understand where I'm going with this? And we're being told that there's something else. And we're being told that we have to accept that there's something. We can't, we're being told, don't believe what we see. Our eyes are lying to us. See how we're, we're going to get into the truth versus your beliefs. I believe that people should be able to do whatever they want to do and be whoever they want to be. That is my belief. That is a belief of mine. That, that, that I, am, I am more libertarious in, in, in what I believe people should be able to do. I believe you should live your life any old way you want to. You have to deal with the consequences of how you are living your life. You gotta be responsible for that. But yeah, you, you can live your life any old way you want to. However, there has to be truth in it. There has to be truth in it. When we step away from what are normal truths and cloud our visions with, with, with when we get to the point to where we have to lie to ourselves to make somebody else feel accepted or or good what are we really doing this for is that really helpful is that really helpful forget the other person is it helpful for yourself not at all now i believe that everybody have a right to live the way they want to live and you can call yourself whatever you want I also believe that I have the right to speak in truth to you as well. And if if the if you don't like the truth I'm telling you, then stop talking to me. That I had a shirt that said that paraphrasing it. I can't yeah, paraphrase it, but yeah, the shirt was basically if you don't like if you don't like what I'm saying, quit talking to me.
Truth trumps law. Y'all get what I'm saying? Truth. Where there is truth, there's no need for the law. Because the truth is the law. Where there is untruth, where there's deception, where there is corruption, that's what the law is for. Law is not for the truth, because the truth is the truth. How Can I ever... share something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Jolene. Yes, yeah. I, I was in love with this man a couple of years ago. And I'm telling you, I really liked him. But his mother, I think I um, mentioned this, his mother abused him. And this conversation, you know, we talk about nonfiction. We talk about truth. He could not handle my conversation. So instead of saying, I just, I'm not there. He turned it around to be mean to me. He tried to just demean what I'm, what my truth is. And Absolutely. I'm like, no, you are not. No, you are not. <laughs> you know? And he just, and I, it was done. I was done. I couldn't, I'm not, I'm not sitting here trying to convince you on me on anything or, or anybody else. That's not mm. me. If mm. you take me, take me as I am. If you love me, love me. But I don't have to convince you about who I am. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. I, I, you know, uh, those of y'all that's been on the call with me before and those that know me, uh, you know, personally in an intimate way, you know, I, uh, I'll tell them myself because it's the truth. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys the truth about all of my shenanigans, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the unexpected. Because it's the truth. And they're part of me. It may be past parts of me, but they're part of me and they won't change no matter what is up ahead of me, what opportunities, what, what, uh, uh, endeavors, uh, there's nothing up ahead of me that can change the truth of who I am. Nothing. There's no job. There's no destination. There's no relationship. There's no amount of money. There's nothing, nothing changes the truth about who you are. Now, just because I believe something, just because you believe something, doesn't necessarily make it true. Y'all know what I mean? Just be, And it don't matter how many people believe it. Doesn't necessarily make it true. It's your belief. It's something that you have, your belief is something that you have decided to align with and follow. And it could have come from a personal experience, probably came from a little research. You might've been given some things. You have decided that you believe. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, most people think I'm talking just about religion. No, I'm talking about the whole gamut. Where'd your morality come from? Did you need, did you, did you need guidance to know that stealing was bad? Did you need to, did you need to hear or was natural instinct? Did you know that if it wasn't yours, you need to leave it alone? I got a, I got my own idea about, you know, killing. Killing in and of itself, is it bad? Well, it depends. If you just walk up to somebody and crack them, yeah, that might be. But if you're in defense of your own life and the other person ends up dead, is that bad? Is it wrong? Are you a murderer? 
Where'd your morals come from? Most of us on in 3D that's that's alive right now, we have been influenced by the Ten Commandments. I don't care where, even if you ain't never been to church, you've been influenced by the Ten Commandments because from the Ten Commandments comes the law that governments use to keep folks in check. Out of that Ten Commandments, and 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 you know, folks don't even want to talk about this, but the Ten Commandments come out of the forty-two laws of Mayat, actually. I, I have a, a, a saying, you know, no matter what anyone thinks, you cannot legislate morality. Can't make a law making folks like each other. Can't make a law make folks treat each other equal. That's a moral wow. issue. It's a moral issue. Where's your, where's your morals come from? Anybody want to chime in about their morals? Where'd your morals come from? Anybody? Uh, yes, Victoria. Oh, oh, most of mine was taught. <laughs> okay, you inherited them. They were given to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they were given to you. Uh, some were verbal, some were at the end of some sort of weapon. But they were given to you. You were, you were, we were taught, you know, thou shalt not steal, don't kill, don't covet your neighbor's ox and wife and all, all of those things. And we were taught morality. Some of the morality we were born with. Some of us already knew that certain things were just wrong. And because it's wrong for me, it may not be wrong for you and vice versa. What y'all or you might think is morally wrong, I might think it'd be like, hmm, that's just part of it, part of life. There's no one size fit all for morality. There are certain areas that we can all agree on that shouldn't happen. You mess with children, uh, uh, sexual way, yeah, that's against their will. Yeah, that, that's one of those that we can all agree on. But one that we can't all agree on is pornography. Because what is gross and, and offensive to me, someone else might think that that is just mild entertainment. You know, the, the, when the uh, uh, Congress uh, brought out the anti-pornography -porno law. They never really described exactly what was the line. There's no line, you know, uh, where everything under this is cool, but anything over this is not. And we're subjected to to some committee, some 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 body outside of ourselves. Their judgment over what is decent and indecent when it comes to pornography. Is that fair? Is that fair that, that our morals tied up in, in laws and they're picked for us? I don't have an issue with, with pornography. I used to watch it plenty. I haven't, I haven't had the need to watch it in years. Uh, uh, most of what I watched, I was curious. I was just like, wow, you can do that? I never, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I'm just old fashioned, straight up, regular sex type of guy. I don't, yeah. But some of it I have seen has been real offensive. Who draws the line? Who gets to decide what's offensive or not? Do you, do you in and of yourself get to choose what is offensive or has, it, has that choice already been made for you? And then you just get to make the choice of what someone else has said is acceptable. Morality. I like, I, I like the fact, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Oh, I was saying I like the, the fact that I matured and was able to make better choices 
some choices, you know, when I was young, I, I shouldn't have done that because one particular thing, it beats me up every day. But, you know, the way to maturity is to make the stupid decisions <laughs> and realize you made the mistake, you know, so. Absolutely. Like I always say, each one of us that is on this call and who is listening to this call, we are the sum total of every one of our past lives and everything we've done since we left our mom's portal up until this point. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the unexpected. The great choices and decisions and the not so great choices and decisions. The toxic relationships and the, and the just the, the lazy, the, just all of it. We are the sum total of all of that. So there's things that, there, there are things in, in life that we all sit back and we think, oh, man, if I could do it over, I wouldn't do that again. But I, there's nothing that I wouldn't do again. Now, I have, I have some maturity and some, some knowledge now. So some of those things that I did prior to, if I had this maturity and knowledge, they would have ended up differently. Some of those choices would have been different. But I'm still grateful for who I am right now, flaws and all. Do, do, do you need the law to keep you morally in line? Thank God, no. Nope, I don't. You know, speed limit signs says 70 miles an hour where folks who drive 70 or less they don't get mad at the sign <laughs> there's only people who speed who get offended by the sign i i don't I, I drive the speed limit because it's safer for me and it's less wear and tear on my car i don't drive 70 because they say so it's just i, I look at them signs as suggestions their suggestions, but it's still my choice. Morality and your belief systems, you, you, regardless if you believe it or not, universal law influences us all. Yeah, you know, the way, the way I look at it, you know, it's like uh, when you come from a big city, you know, oftentimes people say, hey, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere right and, um, you know, based, based on what you just said if if your you know morality values are a certain way and you get to maintain regardless like you said of what the laws are then that, that you know that must be a pretty good compass that you're set on absolutely it's a great compass you don't have to change with the wind. yeah you don't have to change with the wind absolutely absolutely i tell folks all the time i follow the law because it lines up with my own internal moral code. Now, there are some laws that didn't line up with it and I, I made my choice or choices not to follow the law. I still followed my own moral code. And when, when my own moral code ran afoul of the land's law, I was responsible and accountable and I, I, I took my lick. Universal law influences us all, whether you buy into it or not, believe it or not, whether folks believe it or not. The, the one that is always happening is the law of cause and effect. Every action, bang, has a equal and opposite reaction, bang. It's like that ripple effect, I, I say. What we do is not just for now, it's, it ripples. The law of karma. I, I, I talk to so many people that don't believe in karma and I just like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Then I asked him, well, what do you call it when you just sailing along and then all of a sudden the bottom fall out of your whole existence? What do you call that? 
Oh, that's just <laughs> something random. No, there's nothing random. No. So every day we are manifesting something that we set into motion days, weeks, months, and years ago. Each day that we we rise, we are manifesting something that we set off in motion. We are either re we are receiving the results of our actions every day. If that isn't karma, I don't I don't know a better definition of it. What you have done predicates what you do. What but you, you know what? I, yeah. I, I think um, I have a conversation with that because, and I think everybody goes through a, a pitfall. And so, you know, people could fall into that conversation and blame themselves and get stuck in depression and, and all, and, and it just becomes bigger and bigger because, you know, even me, you know, when I, California, I couldn't get a job. Those white people didn't like, even after I was a clinical social worker for the hospital, nobody would hire me. Here, I, I didn't have my own place for a while. I was at my friend's school couch for a while until I don't know what happened. <laughs> until I, I just, somebody, my friend from um, New York, he said, just become a substitute teacher. Something that I wasn't even thinking started from, from that and start building up. And so, you know, I think we want everything at once and, and don't think about the, have a flexibility of a plan and, you know, start there and it'll, you get, you know, just be flexible. But, I, you know, sometimes that is, it throws up um, progress, you know, well, that thought. And what we really need to understand is, is just like uh, your health is a cycle uh, your employable years, <laughs> there it's a cycle. Money is a cycle and a relationship and a frequency. And we are always in, in consecutive or concurrent seven, nine, 11, 13 year cycles. And, and, and I bet you, uh, Jolene, if, if you would give me those dates when you were in uh, California, I guarantee you something was really opposing your Jupiter. It had more to do with what was opposing your Jupiter than, than anything else. It was in your chart. I guarantee you it was in there. Because I, I had a window of employability that lasted from the, early, the late 80s until 2009 where it didn't matter. I could get a job, I'd be on a job and going on interviews at lunch and all that and changing jobs and this and that. When that cycle ended, and it was in my chart, when that cycle ended, other than a couple of here and there uh, uh, temporary gigs, I haven't had a job since. Since my window of employability cycle closed. I haven't had a job. It's in my chart. We could we could trace those moments of inactivity, uh, 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 periods of when you're uh, uh, housing uh, challenged. I don't call it homeless because as long as I got my soul, I'm always home. But when you know when you when I, I've been housing challenged before, it's in my chart. It's in your your natal chart. All of that, all of that is in your chart. The, the, the law of cause and effect happens. Yeah. Law of karma happens. Uh, law of detachment. Yeah. And, and I'm going to teach on, on these universal laws. I'm going to do a whole series on them, especially the law of detachment. And again, like I said, uh, you know, religion, politics, uh, useless sports arguments um uh you know frivolous debates all of those fall into what i call just because you believe it don't make it true this may upset folk i don't care i believe in god i believe in a source in something that 
some some entity being whatever that started all of this. Everything else is up for debate. Yes, Sharon, you have your hand raised. Yes, I do. So this one is kind of hard for me to follow because I truly don't believe any of this is real. I believe this is like a hologram universe and everything can be manipulated. So it's hard for me to grasp these truths when I know things can change. So I, I'm with you. I'm just letting you know I'm with you. But I got it, you. it's still because for me, like karma, it it has more truth than one plus one equals two to me. All right. You know, so I don't know. I'm just letting you know I'm here, but it, it's just kind of no, hard. Appreciate no, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. I'm grateful that you stuck around for this long uh, of this, uh, <laughs> especially when when the 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 bulk of the topic is grading against your own truth about all of this, and I appreciate your your truth because it can it is. I'm not saying that that your truth. I'm not discounting it. I'm not going to disparage you for it. I'm not going to you know start insulting you or 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 you know any of those things. I'm going to say hmm hmm. Okay. Anything is possible. I'm not discounting anything. I'm not turning my eye to anything. Is this a hologram? Is this is is uh, 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 3D real, or are we all just in a simulation? And the stuff that we have, we have we have bought into the collective belief that this chair I'm sitting in is a chair, that the car I drive is right, a car. Right, right. And that's what I feel. It's like we just bought into the belief that that chair you're sitting in is real and it's there. In actuality, it's actually not. That's just uh, how I, I feel about things. It's a little out there, so I'll be quiet. <laughs> but I, I agree with you because what I remember, I was taking a sociology class and he... And the professor was talking about the letters and the numbers. And he was saying, what, what, why do you think that's an A or a B or a C? Absolutely. We bought into that. We bought into that. Right. You know, there has right. to be a theme of communication. But that was somebody else's way of having us bring, bring us into that. And so, yeah, you're, you are right. Because everything of this are symbols. I'm about to drive to a red light. So I'm going to stop and I see a green. Somebody created that so I can follow along. Absolutely. Right. Just you're right. like, cause I, yeah, you're right. I believe that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling because it's like someone would say that the truth is that the 12th month is, is December or something like that, right? Uh -huh. But Deca is 10. 10. Like, right. Octa is 8. And it's, right. ten, like, it's so much that's distorted seven. that yeah, yeah, seven. it's kind of yeah. hard for me to find truth in any of this at Absolutely. this point. Absolutely. And I appreciate, I appreciate the, the uh, awakening and the awareness to that uh, uh, point of view. And, and believe me when I say that's not far out and that's not far out for me. You know, I mean, I got some, some things out that, that, you know, someone may consider just this far out. Uh, um, I, I believe I can see our alien brethren looking over the moon at us. <laughs> and I believe that there are, they are our people and we are from them. Yeah, I believe, I don't believe in the, in the big bang thing or the evolution. I believe we were seeded. I believe this planet was seeded with 10 seeds of human beings. And there, there was two seeds that were open. One came the reptilians the other came some other folks and they co-mingled and made their own species. Shoot, can I get in there? But if you, and if you, and, and I can, I can talk us through enough 
to where I make sense with my theory that the planet was seeded because there are there are basically 10 sets of folk that share similar or or the same type of characteristics and, and effects. And then there are two sets of folks that don't. And they really, especially during this time in North America, the differences really come out. So you're right, you're right. As far as, as truth is concerned, is there a truth? Or, or is everything that we are doing something that somebody else defined for us and we just bought into it? I believe I'm alive on earth, so thus I'm here. Mm, exactly. exactly. I believe that this is going out across the airwaves on Zoom, so thus y'all is here. I believe y'all is looking back at me while I'm looking forward at you guys. I believe it. So does that make it true? Mm -hmm. Just because I believe, just because I believe the planet was seeded don't make it true. Just like just because I believe the earth orbits around the sun. Now, all of that could be a hologram. All of it. All of it. And none I of it could be. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I wrote my um my books. None of them, most of them don't have like punctuations. And this lady I met, she said, where's your punctuations? It doesn't, I said, why would I need punctuation? Who said I need a punctuation? You read into, you read my expression and then you stop when you feel that you want to stop because Absolutely. you don't you like that. I don't, I don't want to be controlled by a period or- a Or <laughs> exclamation point. Yeah, it's, it's, it's deeper than that. It's Absolutely. deeper than that. So, you know, we became, um, what's that condition so much we can't even think outside of the damn box, right? I mean, think about it who gave the symbol that we recognize as eight, who gave it its value? Did we ever question, like, well, how did eight get the value that it has? How did one get the value that it has, right? And who wrote the definitions of blue and yellow? Who, who decided that blue was this color? Blue. <laughs> That's right. And white was this color. Who decided that? And, yeah. and, and we all buy into it. We, we buy into it. Because when I look at this paper that I wrote everything on, the paper is white because I bought into that's the color of the paper. The ink is blue. That's the color. But who gave that color that that description? Who described all of that? Mm -hmm. See how our belief system. See how they all tied up and mm, what we what I believe. And and some of us are ah, ready to die for what we say is our truth. Mm -hmm. Might not even be the truth at all. Yeah. Discernment, discernment. I'm, I'm gonna end it, end it on that. We're gonna break. We're gonna stay in truth, morality, and your belief system. I, I have a feeling this is gonna be a couple of classes on this one. Uh, but we're gonna end it with that. We're gonna end it at just because I believe something doesn't make it true. Just because. I give y'all a perfect example, perfect example. Some folks uh, believe and will argue you to the death that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. Some, and, and some people could be right. I have my own truth about that subject. And I believe that there are a couple of guys that should be considered the greatest basketball player of all time before you even get to Jordan. 
<laughs> All right, be careful now. <laughs> One guy, great all-time leading scorer in the league, they changed the rules of the game because of him. I don't ever remember they changing any rules or moving foul lines or anything for Jordan. They outlawed a particular shot because of this cat. And this cat in a in a eight year period won seven championships. The only reason why it wasn't eight for eight is when he got to UCLA as a freshman, he couldn't play on the varsity team. Talk about Kareem Abdul Jabbar, who I believe mm -hmm. any greatest of all time argument for basketball. Got to start with him. Mm. He's in the conversation. Another guy was his teammate. Two other guys were his teammates. One of them averaged a triple-double the first five and a half years of his career. Everybody think what Russell Westbrook is doing is all fan and dandy. This cat, Oscar Robinson, Averaged triple double first five and a half years of his career and was two rebounds away from averaging it for his whole career. And one Irvin Magic Johnson. If I'm starting an NBA franchise from scratch and I could pick any player I wanted to start my franchise, I must pick one of them three first before Jordan even be considered. That's just my that's my truth though. And I'm sure I got other folks that got enough stats and enough emotional rhetoric and their own belief that could argue me down in, in favor of Jordan or even somebody else. But I always, I always add that to the generation, you know, everybody has their own generation. So, you know, people might not recommend remember that guy you just mentioned, but they're going to remember Jordan because they were living in the same time period and the sneakers and all that stuff, which really wasn't for us. He said it was for white people so that money can go to our community, but we turned it around. So we, and he's, he'll say it for yourself. And so I'm not really into basketball. So. Just because just because we believe something, don't make it true. I'm thankful and grateful for everybody here. Uh, ran over a little bit today, but it was very exciting uh, uh, conversation. I'm I'm really really grateful uh, to see everyone. And uh, uh, if uh, I'm going to open it up uh, for some final thoughts from from anyone who would like to give some final thoughts. No. Well, I, is, I, well, I just is, want to say I like this conversation. I feel like, you know, it's an I statement for me. Um, as I hear everybody else's ideas in my job and everything. And it's nice to just share and have high I, I statements and have positive. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Well, you're uh, a vital part of, of the circle, uh, Jolene, and, and always, always uh, uh, needed wanted and desired to be a part of this and we're grateful oh, we're grateful for your you. contributions yes we are thank you i appreciate yes. you so much all right anybody else well this has been on the sevens with pythias b metatron where we awaken ascend and expand we're going through the 88 steps of your mastered self and somewhere along your journey your mastered self awaits you I love each and every one of y'all. Goodbye for now. And I'll see you guys on the next go round. Bye now. <laughs>